Let's talk anime. Hello and welcome to Brandon's Discuss Anime, a Reckless Amoeba podcast. I am your host, Brandon Horvath, and with me are my co-hosts, Brandon Failinger. Uh, yep, still a disappointment to my parents and everyone else that I know. Uh, so, uh, everything's the same. Oh, uh, don't worry, man, you're not a disappointment to me, you're a good friend and co-host. You know, I could say something to that, but I think I'm going to let it slide for now. <laughs> also with us, as usual, Ryan Stokely. Uh, same thing Brandon said, except I said less words. <laughs> <laughs> words are hard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> nothing much going on in banter time. Except I, I will I will bring up one thing quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you got something else you want to throw um, in first. I, th- I was just going to bring up that it appears Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is coming back? Oh, really? Who knows when? We got like a 30 second video about a week or two ago. Uh, and I've yeah. just been sitting here trying to ana- analyze what the fuck is happening in there. So, we may be talking about that on a episode or discussion sometime down the line? I'd love to sit down and analyze it and see if you can think of anything, too. Because, like, there's things I think are happening, but who knows? Yeah, knowing that, who the hell knows what it's about. Pretty much. Um, okay, you said you were going to have something? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, the last, like, few months... Sony's been kind of an asshole about cross-platform play. So, you know, playing with other people that are on, like, say... Let's say you're playing on your, you know, your PS4. Now, can you play online with people that are playing on an Xbox or a PC or a Nintendo Switch, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo and Microsoft have been like, ah, sure, let's do it. It's great. And for the last, like, six months or so, people have been, like... They've been, like, knocking on Sony for not doing it because they're like, but the PlayStation is great, and we want to make sure that the PlayStation has the best experience. So you got to stay on PlayStation and nothing else. <laughs> like, th- their reasoning was the most anal retentive thing I've ever heard, which is just basically, hey, the PlayStation experience is great, and we don't want it to be bogged down by sharing it with others. Oh. And I'm just, I'm sitting there like, but everybody else is having a great time, and you're refusing to, like, do the normal thing that everyone else is doing. Yeah. Like, it's not gonna harm you. And it's literally, like, three games. Specifically, it's Fortnite right now, which is what drove yeah. them into finally breaking yeah. down and letting it happen. And then it'll probably be, be Rocket League. Probably. And then there, whatever else. But, like, the, <clears throat> the the thing was, too, when they put out, like, the uh, the memo to everyone about it, it's like, well, we've been working hard to try and make this experience great without sacrificing PlayStation's, you know, integrity and the great way we play. And we finally worked around a solution. And I'm just sitting there like, it wasn't a problem to begin with. It was you just being an asshole. Hmm. It's literally you being anally retentive about not doing something that everyone else is doing. It's great. They're going to be testing it, quote unquote, testing it. It's even better, too, because it's literally, I think it was like the Fortnite people or one one of the other devs that were working with Crossplay, and they're like, it's literally as simple as turning it on. It's always, it's not even a problem as far as difficulty to make it happen. It's just a push of a button. Huh. But yeah, they, they finally broke down and they're like, yeah, we're going to maybe try it and see what happens. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm more of a... After like six months. I'm more of a Sony guy, so I'm just a little bit mad. About what? About them taking so long to... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it was one of the most anally retentive things I've ever seen, with, like, no literal reason behind it other than, we don't wanna... And the thing is, it's not like it would take away from the people buying the console, right? Yeah. Sony's been leading the charge at this point with sales on the PS4 yeah. and just the fact that they have so many other great exclusives. Yeah, which say all their exclusives are 
Which wouldn't touch. She wouldn't even touch cross-platform at all. Because mm-hmm. it's only on PS4. Mm-hmm. It, it makes no goddamn sense. And I'm just, well, maybe not surprised because now that Sega's gone, third-party Sonic is on all platforms, but it just seems a little bit odd that Crash and soon-to-be Spyro will be on all platforms, not just a year on Sony exclusive, and then everybody gets it. Yeah, well, Crash Bandicoot is on Xbox right now. I was just thinking that it should have been Sony exclusive for a certain amount of time before going to the other ones. Did Sony buy Rare? Microsoft owns Rare. That's what I thought, but not their... Maybe not all of their IPs, because, I mean, yeah. like, look at look at um, Donkey Kong Country. That's still yeah. owned by Nintendo, like all of the yeah. rights to those characters in that game, but Rare made it. Because I think Donkey Kong was initially a Nintendo product, so because it was. of that... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, like, Donkey Kong was their first game. I think it was one of the. It was. It was up there. Is really yeah. like. If it wasn't their first, it was one of. It was in like the top. They have some the first three. But like, yeah. Oh, by the way, on the fifth, which I think this is coming out the day after. No. No, this will be a week after. Okay, so the fifth, we're going to be getting Mario Party, Super Mario Party, on the Switch. So, I might be screwing around with that. Hmm. Sounds like fun. Especially, yeah, especially if it's got um, online play, which would be interesting, just playing Mario Party with randos. Maybe Ryan and I can come over and we could have some special episode or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know how we, I, I haven't figured guys. out how to record off the Switch yet. I'd have to look into oh, that. Um, I have a El Gato. Oh, would that do it? Yeah. Sweet. Well, then. So, I just got to bring the Switch then and also get another pair of uh, the controllers. I don't have that yet either. I only got one pair that came with it. The Joy-Cons, that's what they are. Well, maybe look forward to that at some point. Oh, we're going to want to murder each other. You realize that, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and with me not knowing the Switch that well, if anything... Oh. GameCube controllers. I have one. <laughs> And it's going to, I think the game is going to come with the uh, thing. Hear that or they already have the GameCube. Oh, that'd uh, be nice. I didn't know that. Dongle, yeah. So, hilarious times at all where I'm struggling to play. <laughs> we will this, smash you. This will be the end of the podcast. <laughs> this will be the end of this channel. We just hate each other by the end. <laughs> and then next week we'll be friends again. <laughs> Just I don't like think so. Dan I think, and Aaron. I think, I think these grudges are going to last, man. You don't understand how Mario Party tears people apart. <laughs> Mario Party. I haven't played that in almost 10 years because of one game where I literally had all the stars. And then my nephew, somehow there's a way to get somebody's like half of their stars. Yeah. And my nephew did that like twice to me or something. <laughs> and then he won. And there was like five of us playing, or four of us playing. I was like stomping everybody. Then I literally was came in last place. And that was the last time we played that. <laughs> you see, these grudges last forever, man. <laughs> Just on those games. <laughs> Yeah, people say like, "Oh man, it's Broketober that's coming up." I literally don't really care about anything that's coming out other than that. Uh, Dead Red or Red Dead Redemption Two comes out, and Fallout seventy six I think comes out in November. I think that's the Red case. Dead Redemption yeah, I don't, comes out. I, I know Red Dead's supposed to be Fallout. really good. I never played the first one. I just don't have much of it, so it's not like a priority uh, for me at this point. Okay. It's super awesome. They had it on the Red Dead Redemption, the first one. On sale on Xbox One for like seven bucks <laughs> with all the DLC, so I got that. Wait, was it an Xbox exclusive? Yes. That's why they never had an Xbox. Or uh, no, it was for PlayStation. Oh, did but, it? Nah. No, I just never looked at it. 
I think it came out for like they redid it for Xbox One mm-hmm. or something, or I don't know. I'm dumb, but it was on Xbox One, so I got uh, it. Going from not having anything to talk about to suddenly having too much to talk about uh, is going yeah. on right now. Uh, quick, quick thing. Uh, okay. Echoes for Family season three is coming out this month, I think. So. If you ever watched F is for Family on Netflix, it's a really funny show. I've heard of it. Yeah. I haven't actually watched it yet. Bill Burr writes on it. Funny comedian. I, I do need to get back into BoJack Horseman, though, because, dear God, that show. Yeah, that show is great. I really want to get into it because Rachel says so many good things, and possibly during my downtime next month, maybe I'll marathon it or something. New podcast episode. <laughs> We do a BoJack Horseman episode. M- okay. M- maybe. Maybe. I, I, am, I am down for that shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Span to other types of uh, animation. Let me, let me just <laughs> tell you this right now before we get into the actual meat of the podcast. Todd and Tristan are like one and the same. I will tell you that right now. Oh. It's that. <laughs> like some of the shit Todd does, just shit Tristan would do. Or situations he's actually been in. Hmm. You talking about the character from the show? Yes, Todd. From Bojack. Yes. I forget if that's the dog. No. Todd's or... the, like, mooch. Okay. The Bojack. The guy? Yes. Okay. Where's the beanie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh. Um, although I kind of laid the spoiler on a little bit th- Thick last time! Ryan, today's anime is Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, I forget if I heard of this one, but, um, is that the anime about the, uh, high school? Nope. Where people get eaten? Or You're thinking like of that? high school DXD, sir. Okay. Uh, gotta be some kind of, like, zombie outbreak or something. Or no zombies. Well, no zombies. you no are, zombies. like, have the right genre since it's Halloween coming up. And since it's now October, we're going to be having spooky anime this month. Mm. Oh. Ghosts and girls of every age. Wouldn't you like to see something strange? Come with us and you Pull your pants back up. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> God damn, that's just cool and unusual, man. <laughs> I uh, oh man, I don't know. Like ha- a haunted cemetery, a spooky ghoul gets a job at, as a barista, and <laughs> he has to put on makeup <laughs> to hide himself. Wait, wait, wait! Did you say? <laughs> did, did you say a ghoul gets a job as a barista? Yes. Did you see this anime? No, I have not. <laughs> However, I'm just imagining them doing it with like alcohol, and like, <laughs> I guess more like a zombie is what I'm thinking of at this point, and just like them taking off their finger and using it as like a stir for the drink. Because our main character is a kind of barista in a coffee shop. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> point in that category? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh... Yeah, that's all I got. And then... Just follows his life as a barista, or her life. You know? Oh, (laughs) my God. (laughs) Somebody needs to animate these. (laughs) Not me, I've got too much shit to do as it is. <laughs> yes. But, is this in the near future, or would you say this is pretty much now? I'd say current day. Oh. Uh, That's fine, Ryan. I would say now there's not enough going on to make me feel like the technology's advanced any further. Hmm. Okay, so... Our main character is about to go on a date. Yay, first episode we shoved into this little romantic subplot. Ken Kaneki, also called Kaneki, 
is about to go out with his crush, except... Should, should we also mention that she's much older than him? And he's like 19? She's like 25-ish? Uh, Mid-20s, late 20s, somewhere in there. Yeah. And they finally go out. She says, like, hey, there's a lot of monster attacks called ghouls. There's a lot of ghoul attacks. I'm kind of scared. Will you walk me home? He obliges, being the gentleman that he is. And right as they're outside this alleyway, she turns out to be a ghoul and starts attacking him. To the point of him nearly dying, luckily, steel beams fall down from a construction site close by mm -hmm. and kill them both. Wait, so she was a ghoul? Yes, yes. And and was that a barista? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not yet. The barista part comes later. Wait, alright, hold on. Yes. So she got this dude. She was a ghoul. Yes. Yep. And she was talking to a, a non-ghoul dude. Yes. Literally the only difference between the two is that one can't eat, like, human food. To them, it's completely disgusting. Aside from, for whatever reason, coffee. Uh -huh. Um, they eat humans. As far as the way they look, the only difference that you will ever see is that their eyes go from, like, the white of their eye turns black, and the yeah. iris and everything turns red. That on And that only ever happens yeah. whenever they, like, want it to, willingly. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. their skin isn't falling off or anything? No, nope. no, no, no. They, no. they look completely normal and human. Completely. So it's like, so to clarify, they aren't zombies, they're... Ghouls. Yes. yes, ghouls. Like so, the... Kaneki is near death, but luckily, there's an organ donor close by, the ghoul, who nobody knows is a ghoul <laughs> since she looks completely human. So, they transplant some of her organs into his body to save his life, and now he's a ghoul. Half ghoul. Half ghoul. Hmm. He's so only good. one eye changes. And he wants to eat human flesh. Except hmm. he has a human side to him, so he's like, no, this is wrong. I can't do this. He's still disgusted by the idea of it. And, you know, morality and ethics. So he eats fried chicken instead. He can't. He can't. All that food tastes Wait. disgusting to him now. And Wait, it makes so him sick. He doesn't eat at all because he doesn't want to eat humans, and then he's also disgusted by normal food. Until he's forced to. The only thing he can do is just eat um, or drink coffee. That's the only thing that's uh, like a human food that With, he can um, sugar hmm. cubes. Eh, not, not even. Uh, that's it, it's something in there. I am assuming, maybe it's soaked blood. in blood or something. Yeah, that's, that was my guess. Um, but yeah, those quote unquote sugar cubes help to like kind of. It doesn't get rid of their hunger, but it helps to suppress it a little bit. Oh, like real humans. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Minus uh... cannibalistic rages. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're two different species at this point, so I mean, they're not. It's not cannibalism. Yeah, well... Except if you talk to Frenchy French. <laughs> hey, uh, you want to hang out later? You want to get some food later, guy? Uh, sorry, I have work. <laughs> but maybe at a later point. <laughs> so, like, here's one of my questions about this series, right? Mm-hmm. If these two are so closely related, like ghouls and humans are so closely related, that they can literally create a hybrid child, how much difference is there between them genetically, really? Uh, I was looking around, and it seems that the only difference is ghouls have a special organ that humans don't. Yeah, it's the, the Takune, I think it is, the yeah. hunting organ, which uh -huh. apparently can change size, shape, and density at will, at least as far as, like, for the ghoul's concerned, under their control. 
Mm -hmm. They also have a floating kneecap. <laughs> so they, they walk with a limp every now and then. A spooky floating kneecap. <laughs> so yeah, ghouls basically hunt with this thing called a kakume, which sprouts out of, from what I was able to gather, a hole pierced in their skin somewhere. For most of them, it seems like it comes out of their lower back, but there are some that it seems to come out of, like, a neck or a shoulder. Um, but yeah, it, it varies in size and shape as the ghoul, you know, wants it to. And depending on how well they can control it, um, it could literally be almost any shape. And let's just clarify that we're going over Tokyo Ghoul. No Tokyo Ghoul, we which is the sequel series to this. Prequel series, I Se think, is what I gathered? Uh, no, because at the end, there was a coffee shop called Ri. Hmm. Okay. It, yes, it is a sequel. So Ri is the sequel taking place a few years after this, and... Oh, I, th I think we should also bring up, none of us have read the manga, which... A lot of people seem to say is far better. I'm going to get into it eventually. I just don't know when yet. From what I understand, Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 follows the manga a whole lot more closely than Season 2, also called Root A. And that seems to jumble the plot around slightly, skips over some chapters, and adds its own stuff. So, here's, here's what they needed to do, mm -hmm. right? When they, like, they, they came out with three, right? Here's what they do instead. They go back and they make Route M. It's not Route, it's Route. R-O-O-T. Kind of Whatever. like the mathematical symbol. Whatever. Point, <laughs> point is, they go back with an M. So the A stands for the anime version, the M stands for the manga version. That's how you fix this mistake. You've got it perfect set up. They can fix it. Interesting thought. But yeah, I just felt like it was important to point out the fact that we have not read the manga as of yet, or at least I have not. I know you haven't. I don't know if you plan to, because I do. Maybe. Um, and I guess I'll get back eventually once I've actually either finished or caught up, because I don't know if it's still ongoing. Um, with I, that, I know the give my manga. Thoughts. I know we ended earlier this year. So, like yeah. April? Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll get into that eventually. Just don't know when. <laughs> and could we just talk about the creepy French guy, Tsukiyama? <laughs> Is he French or Italian? He says, I think he like sprinkles in some French. It, I feel and, like it's both. Like, I feel like he jumps around to different languages in general. Because he uses English, too. It, in the dub, he sounded more French than Italian. Like, my, my point is, though, like, he's using not just mm -hmm. French as a language. He's using, I think, Italian as well. He's throwing in English. And honestly, honestly, I was going to watch this completely in Japanese, but I could not find Route A in Japanese on the places where I was looking, so I was like, eh. Just go to Verb, you can find it there. Hmm. Tokyo Ghoul, brought to you by Verve. Just saying, that's how I had to find it. Yeah, I went off the beaten path to a anime archive website, so... Hmm. I will say this, no, no, I, I thought the voice acting for the Japanese version was fine. I didn't find anyone obnoxious. So, so did, did, you, did you fall in love with a certain girl character? No, because in this anime, it's Sundari, pedophile, or bust. And I, <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> I didn't want to be in any of the groups... <laughs> what about Rize, though? She was good. She was a good character, but I she wouldn't would say <laughs> she was as good as 
most in dairies. <laughs> it's it's true though they don't give you many female characters to work with like most of them are just kind of background or one note there's only two that get any kind of development and one's for like 13 or 14 and the other one is just straight up a tsundere and there's Rize who is like a creepy demon in her voice yeah I, she Look, she was real for, like, the first episode, all right? She was still there. Yeah. I mean, she'd just eat you by the end of it, but she was there. Yeah, but Toka, I found her, like, interesting, but I think I prefer Sundiri's to be a little bit more dirty than soon. <laughs> Wait, what? Is there a di- what? No, no, that's what soon dairy actually means. Soon is mean dairy is sweet. Ah, okay. Like yon dairy is aggressive, murderous, and sweet. Oh, phone. phone call. So that's what everything is there. Gotcha. Mm hmm. Let me see here. Uh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say, like. There is, there is, I think it's Amari, I think. Is that other girl that works at the cafe? Who is always bringing things? No, that's um, that's a different one. Okay. Um, she, she's the dark-haired girl. Oh. Woman. But again, she's like literally in the background most of the time. Like she, she gets a handful of dialogue, and she does start to do stuff by like the end of season two. But it, it's not enough to give you any kind of idea as to what's... What she's really like. Oh, but what about the devil ape? Come on, man. Don't make the devil ape mad. The man who seems to, like, have no other idea other than I need to start saying how great I am by giving out my moniker everywhere. (laughs) Also, we should clarify that, like, there are inspectors, like an entire organization that is dedicated to hunting down and killing ghouls. Okay. And in order for the ghouls to survive, they wear masks to hide their identity. Hmm. So the devil ape has literally, like, an evil Japanese-style gorilla mask to wear. And since he was so nonchalant about it the entire series, I'm just thinking, is that a name you just came up with yourself? Or is that really your moniker? Because... You don't see many of the staff members go ghoul, except at the end. Going ghoul. Yes, just like Danny Phantom. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how many seasons is this show? Um, two... It's three? It's three. Two twelve-episode seasons, and we currently is going to be coming out with its second this month, I believe October 28th-ish? Okay. Yeah, I think October 28th, re- season two starts. Okay. Um, it was on from summer 2014 And then, winter 2015. So, they took a season break in there, and then had some stuff in between. Okay. So, Brandon. Mm Hmm? How about that French guy? The the man who seems to be, like, the most perverted person I've seen in an anime in a long ass time. Y- yes, who is a ghoul, and he is a cannibal, and yes, he actually eats other ghouls. Oh wow! So yes, there is cannibalism in this. Yes, he and not just the technical one between ghoul and human. And he is a gourmet. Ooh, the gourmet. Mm. <laughs> and he has some. Obsession with eating Kaneki. I mean, the man's half human, half ghoul. The scent is just delicious. 
to mouth watering the, to the point where Kaneki gets a nosebleed or something like that. He's like, "Oh, I have a rag you can use," and he keeps that rag around with him at all times, breathing heavily into it and just borderline or orgasming. Yes, <laughs> like it's so ridiculous. There's points where it's just like. He'll he'll go into a bathroom at random points, pull out the Ziploc baggie with the fucking, like, blood on the tankerchief, and, like, pull it out and just start shoving it in his face, breathing in the scent, and you just say, like, him going crazy until his eyes roll back into his head. It's like, what the shit? What is wrong with this man? But the scent of his blood. Oh... Let's point out that human um, ghoul crossbreeds are very rare in that if they would ever naturally occur, nine times out of ten, they're going to just die as, like, stillborns, I think, is what's implied. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a very minor few that do survive. Um, and in Kaneki's case, he's technically artificial because he was made through uh, organ transplant. Which I'm guessing nobody knew this was a possibility. Yeah. Either that, or they actually no. By season two, there's the potential of like, okay, this has been done before, but we don't hear how. Which we don't was know one how. Of my complaints. Like, well, that's the thing, right? I feel like Ri would explain some of that, or if not, the manga does. Mm -hmm. Um, like. What we do get by season two is the idea of like, oh, those steel girders falling on Rize before she could eat you. Yeah, that wasn't just a coincidence. And I think even like that one guy, Yamari, even mentions like a name for like the doctor that gave him the transplant. Because the, the thing was, they were supposed to um like get permission from like his next of kin to do that organ transplant. And the doctor's like, no, we got to do this now. I'll take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. But said doctor disappears after the operation actually occurs. Like, nobody knows where he is or who he is. Like, it's a fake name that he gave, apparently. But this other guy, Yamari, who we'll meet, knows and even says that it was an experiment. Which I find strange if we already have these artificial hybrids that were introduced to later on as well. Mm -hmm. Like, there's at least a set of twins that have been artificially turned into ghouls. To which the, one of the lead investigators says, like, hey, don't I know you? And they run off. Like, they, they were literally within, like, the academy for the investigators at one point. Before they got turned into ghouls. There's also, um, shit. What's that? What's the kid's name? The kid with the white hair that's in the investigators that has, like, the sight. Juzo? Yes, Juzo. He uh, seems like, um, L mixed with Ed from Cowboy Bebop, but a lot more psychotic? Yes. And also from some of the dialogue we got from the twins talking to him, it feels like something happened with him, too. Hmm. Like, I don't know if he was a failed ghoul experiment or what, but for what I got, he apparently had to change his name in order to still work with them. Like, we get some background in that he was basically within, like, the Coliseum, basically, like, within the gourmet area that they have as, like, a child. He was However, raised by ghouls. Yeah, he was raised by ghouls. Um, but what we don't really know is, like... Like, it feels like there's more to his background. Like, he has stitches all over the one side of his body. But doesn't he like to give himself stitches? I didn't get that from him. Oh, because he was saying, I think in the anime, that he said, like, look at my hand. Oh, you gave yourself more? I don't remember that at all. Hmm. At least I... <laughs> thought that dialogue happened. I don't think so. I don't remember that dialogue happening at all. Hmm. 
because it's been something that bothered me about him is just like what are those stitches from and the way that it was implied like when he talked to the twins it's like do those stitches have something to do with him hiding who he was or like was he part of like the whole testing to become like an artificial ghoul as well but got away or was a failed experiment maybe granted he also seemed surprised that they had turned into ghouls so if he was he didn't know they had done the same thing and going back to Sundari psycho pedophile bust Hinami is so tragic of a character oh poor Hinami her father dies you know then she gets led there by the smell of her father with his severed kakune. Then her mother dies protecting her. Then she's led there again by the smell of both of them. Then she's gotta fucking kill the investigator to protect the others. Um, like, she's literally like a 13-year-old girl that goes through all this shit and like, oh, this is so sad. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, yeah, and it seems that somehow the kakune, which is the Ghoul's main weapon, mm. a bio-organic weapon, can be made into a weapon for humans to wield. Yeah, it, like, it, here's the one thing I was questioning about that, too, is, like, it seems like once they're taken, they cannot, like, change their shape anymore or density at all. Mm -hmm. So when the ghoul dies and they take that organ, it's stuck in that form. It can't change anymore. But didn't they have, like, some American Gladiator-style pole weapon, and then it opened up into, like, the main Kakune? I think that's, like, the mechanical component of it, not the organic component. Okay, okay. Um... Like, it, it is interesting, because they always carry them around in a briefcase. Uh -huh. Like, that's how they hide it from, like, normal people. It's just, we're going to carry around a briefcase. You don't know what we have in here. We're government agents. We carry briefcases. Oh, man. <laughs> how uh, else would you know they're government agents? The fact that they always wear a white trench coat. Oh, uh, okay. And they're called the Doves. I'm trying to think of like what else do I want to bring up here um <clears throat> so up until I would say the later half of season one Kaneki is pretty much like no I don't want to be a ghoul why am I a ghoul and mm -hmm. then he gets kidnapped by is it a KO tree or uh bump blanking on the actual name. It starts with an A. Yeah, I know it's like a KO tree or Yeah, something like that. I, I I'm blanking on it right now. Something like that, but he gets kidnapped by them and tortured by them to the point where he keeps seeing Rize saying, Hey, being a ghoul is good. Embrace your ghoul side. He eventually does. And he well, enters... Let, let's illustrate this torture mm -hmm. by the fact that they keep break... The, the one guy, Yamari, keeps breaking and tearing off his fucking... Like, Digits. Yeah. Fingers and toes. Uh. And he constantly makes him count backwards from a thousand... By uh, sevens. By sevens. What the hell? Now, Yamari himself went through the same torture, and it basically broke him and turned him into this mass murdering psychopath that does the same to others. Mm -hmm. And because a ghoul can regenerate, specifically because Kaneki can regenerate to, like, a stupid degree, he can keep coming back within a couple hours each time and keep doing it. More so than any other ghoul, it seems. Yeah, he's, I think he said something along the lines of, your regeneration is so amazing. I couldn't keep doing this to others like this. So eventually, Kaneki himself kind of breaks. Like, one of the things that you see Yamari doing when he shows up is he keeps, like, breaking his own um, uh, pointer, pointer finger each like, time. Cracking his knuckles, kind of. 
<laughs> they, 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 yeah, almost casually like that. But like he takes his like he almost like you know how you would make like the OK symbol for like like with your hand, you know, the ring with your uh, pointer finger and thumb. Right. He puts the thumb on top of the pointer finger and just keeps breaking it. And because ghouls heal, that really means nothing to him. And it seems that Connie it adapted. Too. Yeah, he adapted that tick. He doesn't do it as often, though, right? Yeah. It's only when he starts going into, like, that, like, full-on ghoul mode that he starts picking that mm-hmm. up again. Whereas Gomery was doing it constantly. And it seems by the end of Season 2, Kaneki has let down the facade and become a little bit more human again. That's the thing, right? Like, Kaneki's whole struggle is that he's a human and a ghoul at the same time. And up until, I'm going to say, the end of Season 2, he's been wavering back and forth on which side is more in control. I'm going to say by the end of Season 2, he's found the balance he needs. Mm-hmm. Granted, that's at potentially the life of his best friend. Who is human. And literally sacrificed himself. And then didn't sacrifice himself, but like basically saves him while he's bleeding out at the same time. Do you think he survived? That's that's up for him. If he does, he's not gonna be in good condition. So we might see him in re- in some form. Yeah, because I don't think... It, it's not very clear by the end, because season one and two both end on an extreme cliffhanger. Like, season one ends at, like, the middle of a fight, and season two ends on, like, literally him walking his best friend's body toward the investigators that are all there. Like, an entire army of investigators there to, like, murder ghouls. And he, being the eye patch, is... One of their main targets now. Yeah, because he's been a big, a major player in like causing chaos during season two. <laughs> oh, and it's Algiri Tree. Algiri, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also point this out. Toka, uh, not Toka. What was it? Gonna, it wasn't Toka's brother who's also in that group. Um, it was something else I was going to say, and I'm blanking on it now. I love this. This is great. Is this my stand power where I just forget things I was going to say a second ago? <laughs> and it seems that ghouls have similar powers to each other that can be put in groups. Kind of like um, arm weapons, wings, or some kind of projectile. Um... I feel like it's more their generic ability, I want to say, because the one they mentioned was, like, ghouls that have that are, like, speedy, um, but they don't have the stamina to keep going. Okay. I don't, I don't know if it's really the form of their, um, of their uh, kakunais as much as it is their physical abilities. Okay. Because or at least that's the way it's been implied, anyway. Because Toka and her brother both had the, like, machine gun pellet attack. Yeah, but they also have wings. Like, her brother can fly, whereas um, She Toka, really can't. She can Toka jump. Toka can't, because she's... One wing's bigger than the other. Like, they're not even for her mm-hmm. for some reason. Yes, but she can jump good. Yes, <laughs> jump good. I could jump good. Mm- have you seen Samurai Jack, Ryan? Yeah. That's what we were referencing. Wait, the new... No, or... the Caveman yeah. episode. Like, you can fly... Like, you can fly? No, no fly. Jump good. Oh, man. <clears throat> I don't think I've watched it since, uh... It came out on TV, so... <laughs> yeah. Season 5 was amazing. The ending was meh. I have yeah. issues with it. Yeah, the ending was... Everything, more... everything until literally the last five minutes was great. Yes, yes. 
it's after that that I'm like, there's problems here. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. But we're not here to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. But we're here to talk about probably actually, you know what, now that I'm, now that I'm saying this, right? We're, we're talking about what's probably going to be the next three anime that are just, the manga's better. And one last thing about Samurai Jack, I did see a fan comic where Rick shows up and makes everything better from Rick and Morty. Like, a that was little... a short. What? That was a short that they put out. Really? Yeah. Huh. I, I did not see the short. Yeah, well, go to adultswim.com. I'm pretty sure it's on there. Huh. Maybe but, I yeah. did see that, and I interpreted it to be a comic. I don't know. That was like <coughs> a year or two ago. You're going crazy. Yes, yes, I am. Maybe. Definitely. Definitely. Probably becoming a ghoul. <sighs> yes. But, yeah, they get... Yeah, we should... We should... No, no, we, we basically mentioned it, that they get custom-made masks for each of them. Yes, yes. Um, I'm trying to think what else really goes on in there that's worth mentioning. Uh, we've mentioned Yamari already. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think we've pretty much covered as much as we can. I don't have any severe lingering questions. Like, the only thing I'll say is, like, I don't feel like the anime's bad as a standalone piece. At least as far as one and two are concerned, but I know people revile and hate it, especially season two. Because uh, it's different. Than a lot of it the is manga. just because it's different. And um, since I didn't read it, I don't know whether it's Dragon Ball Super levels of difference. But I think it's more similar to the anime manga comparison than it is. I, I think that's part of the problem, though. I think it's the fact that it feels like you're butchering the original story instead of breaking out and doing something completely different than the original story. Yeah, because um, I, I saw two fights from, like, 12 chapters apart are merged together in one fight, and for example, they'll take like five pages of a manga and convert that into part of an anime rather than the entire chapter. Hmm. Yeah, like, what? again, it's the fact that I think they're butchering the main manga plot, and if they had gone something along the lines of, like, Full Metal Alchemist 2003 versus Brotherhood, where you've got your own original story that branches off from what the manga's saying you would have been better off. Okay. Like, yeah, do season one, make it as similar as you can uh, to the manga, and then once you get into rote A, branch. Branch completely. Like, if you want to take, you know, some key notes that the creator has and sprinkle those in, great. But branch it. So, if Kaneki and Toka do get married sometime in Uri, or after Uri in some epilogue or something, will their kid be three-quarter ghoul then, and how will that work? Like, that, that's a brilliant question to ask, and who the fuck knows? Hmm. Like, for all we know, hybrids are sterile, like... It, it could just be like with a horse and a donkey. The mule that comes, you know, from that breeding is sterile. Hmm. But, um, what's his name who had a human girlfriend? He said, like, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to tap that one more time before the final battle. Nishki. Nishki, yeah. Yeah. So... He's, st he's still full ghoul. He could, he could technically have a kid. Oh, he's... Okay, so he's full ghoul. Yeah, yeah. he's full ghoul. <laughs> oh, that that was one thing I wanted to mention, actually. Um, So we got to find out who the major end boss, quote-unquote, is in this, which is the owl. Right? The one-eyed owl. Yeah. Who we find out is actually 
the child of the bar, uh, the, of the coffee shop, uh, like the owner of the coffee shop, it's his kid. Or at least he assumes that's the case. I'm going to assume he's right. Do you have any idea who the owl might be? Spoiler, I'm pretty sure it's the author. See, I came to the same conclusion. What makes you think that? I'm curious. The fact that it's the one-eyed owl, meaning it's a half-ghoul, and he was implying that he had a kid with a human who grew up, <clears throat> and I and since the true one-eyed owl came after Coffee Boss died... Mm-hmm. That's not really giving me a connection as to why you think it's the author. Then I don't know, really. Like, you, you're literally just listing what happened in the series. You're not giving me a connection between the author and the owl. Let me hear your thoughts. <laughs> All right, so assuming we're going to take the... Uh, uh, the the owner at face value. I, I never remember his name because they always just call him sir. So we're gonna take the owner of the coffee shop at face owner value Chan. and say the, the owner Chan. Yes, sure, why not? <laughs> um, assuming we're gonna take him at face value and the story he says is true, right? And that uh, his child, which he never gives a gender to either. I don't know if the dub does, but the I know the Japanese never gave an actual gender to the child. Um, assuming we're taking him at face value, and assuming that his child does grow up to be the owl, mm -hmm. um, which, if what we saw with Hinami was the same as with the child, she would develop a Kakune, or he would develop a Kakune, the same as the owner. Okay. Because um, Hinami's Kakune became both her mother and her father, like a combination of the two. Whereas for the owl, um, it may have developed the same way as her father. Uh, so my thought process would be that in the flashback, we saw the hair color for that child, and it's the same hair color as the author. Mm -hmm. I want, I think that's the connection, and the fact that um, their kakunes are so similar. Like, there's a reason that he was basically able to become the one-eyed owl and what seems like be mistaken for the one that they saw originally. Because hmm. there's been, what, three separate encounters, at least, with the owl? Yes. The first one where a lot of people, a lot of investigators died. Another one where no one died, and they mentioned, like, he looks smaller. And mm -hmm. then, I think, the current one where they all showed up. So, or, both, or no, the third, the third one where he saves, um, Kaneki when they're saving Kaneki, he shows up there, and that one's the uh, the owner. We know that for a fact. Yeah. So because her hair color is similar, you're guessing she's the manager's daughter. That's my main crux on it. Yeah, that <clears throat> and the fact that she keeps taking interest in like the ghouls. Hmm. I mean, she waltzes right into the freaking inspector's headquarters. And just starts interviewing them. Hello, do you have time for an interview? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're focusing on this character way too much for her to not be something important. And the immediate fact that it's like, their hair colors are the same, makes me jump to, no, she's the owl. There's there's no way. She's not. Well, that part's obvious, hair color. I mean, people dye their hair. Yes, yes. Especially in anime, where like their hair colors are literally fucking balls to the wall crazy. Anything possible. Anything possible. But yeah, I, I'm leaning toward it being the author due to those facts. Um, but clearly you just jumped to it for no reason at all without thinking about it. No, no, I, I'm just saying because they... Ha I think I didn't state it directly, but like you, since there was two one-eyed owls, like Owner, Owner Chan and the real one-eyed owl, and, I'm, and I was guessing that the real one-eyed owl is some relation to Owner-chan. 
because they seem more like a revenge attack than mm -hmm. an all-out attack. And I think, like, that's my main thought on it. I didn't take hair color into thinking. We should also point out that this child was, like, how, how do I put this? Owner Chan had his child. He tucked her away uh, in order to take down the people that were chasing them at the time. Um, and when he came back to get her, she had already disappeared. So somebody picked her up at some point and raised her. And it seems and that never found her again. Um, the author, I forget her name, but she's also has another identity where she wraps herself in bandages and... I thought that too, but I'm like, no, the body's too different. Also, there's a point where we see her take off those bandages and the hair color's brown. Like, we see it from, like, the upper lip down to, like, the start of her chest. And her hair is in, like, uh, like, it's not a ponytail, but it's, like, at, at the base of her neck, you can see that it's a, uh, like, like, it's brought together with, like, a hairband. And it's brown. It's not, like, the dark green that we get with the author. I think they're two different characters, plus the body shape's different. Hmm. They do say the same thing, and before I saw that flashback in, like, the second-to-last episode, I thought the same thing as well. Oh, okay. But I thought, they're, they're saying the same thing. It sounds real strange. They seem the same, but I think the voices are different. They both have a big, big interest in Kaneki. They both do, yeah. But that's just because of the way, like, they're introduced. And they have the same line of, huh, Kaneki-kun, huh? Or something like that. Yeah. Or Kaneki Ken, huh? And I'm like, those two sound like it would be... It, it's the same voice line and the same voice read, but I think the voices are different, and I don't think... Um, I think the body shapes are too different for them to be the same person. Plus, that one minute when we saw her taking the bandages off and the hair color's different. Okay. But... And I know this is because he went ghoul, or like embrace his ghoul side, it seems that Kaneki changed his hair color. So, I'm... That, I don't know. Mm, that was something I actually had a question about in that last episode, where it seemed to keep flickering back and forth between, like, his original brown and the white that it became. I'm guessing that was his inner struggle, like, what should I be? Human I don't or know. Ghoul? It's, it's weird. Because it's not like it's half and half anymore. It, or uh, anymore. It's not like it's half and half at all. It's only one or the other. Maybe like a mental internal struggle? Maybe. It, it's a really weird symbolism that I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. And... We, we did get the same thing, I think, when he was getting tortured as well. Mm -hmm. A little bit. So maybe if his hair is black in Re. I will have an argument for Bandage Girl and Author being the same person. Potentially, but it seems like that's that inner struggle, not... Like, okay. if that's the case, it's the inner struggle, in which case, I don't know if that would make sense for the owl, who seems to be pretty damn certain of what she wants to do. Hmm. So, Ryan, any more questions? <clears throat> uh... No. So... No. Is this something that you might watch added to your ever-growing list? I'll add it to my non... My, my, my never, yeah. Never-ending list. My never-ending list of shows. I, I will say this. The action, at the very least, the animation in this is really good. Oh, yes. The fight scenes are really good. Like, I, I can't fault on the animation team on this at all. It's really nice, and the voice acting is pretty good. I can fault for the story if the manga is as much better as I hear it is. So, Brandon, you are very, very familiar with next week's one, so I'm going to let you do the tease. Uh, I'm just going to say bloodbending. Bloodbending all the way. Ooh. Oh. Also, I'm very curious to find out if the Japanese main character's voice is as awful as the dub's voice. Because, mm. I'll be honest, in the next one, I'm fine with literally all of the other dub voices except the main character. It just, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It's bad. Uh, I, I hate it. So, follow <laughs> the white rabbit, we're going to Wonderland. Oh, um, man. Oh. It's not white, it's covered in blood. Oh, the blood rabbit. 
So follow there you the go. blood rabbit. We're going to Wonderland. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um. So see you then. Bye. See you.